It's finally here. It is finally in Australia. The e.l.f. Halo Glow Liquid Filter. Oh my god. This has been a long time coming. It officially releases on the 30th of March, but Priceline has been stocking it on their shelves very early. It is also available on the Priceline website, so if you can't find it in store and you want to get your hands on it, have a look online. So some of the details, this comes with 31.5 mils of product, which is just like a tiny bit more than your standard foundation. There are eight shades available and it retails for a whopping $35. Personally, I'm quite shocked about that. I feel like maybe 20 to 25 is still expensive, but a bit more reasonable for the e.l.f. brand. $35 was like, whoa, <laughs> okay. Like I still bought it, but I think it's a bit ridiculous. I know that in the US it retails for about 15-ish dollars and even that seems quite expensive for US drugstore prices. So maybe this product overall is just an expensive one for e.l.f., but yeah, $35, ooh. Hopefully it goes on sale in some of the price line sales. But yeah, I think it might just be an expensive product for e.l.f. and I'm hoping they're not just like jacking up the price because of the hype. Now, if you don't know what this is, it's a multi-purpose liquid glow booster that gives the complexion a soft focus filter effect. It contains hyaluronic acid and squalene, which is good for moisturizing and hydration. It can be worn alone, it can be worn under or mixed in with your foundation or as a highlighter. Now we all know that the e.l.f. is meant to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. So let me just give you a breakdown of the details. As I said, the e.l.f. comes in eight shades, 31.5 mils and retails for $30. The Charlotte Tilbury comes in at 12 shades, it has 30 mils of product and retails for $65. Now I picked up the lighter shade in the range, which is called one fair and I'm actually pretty disappointed at how dark it swatches. I'm hoping that it blends out better once it's on the face but from the swatch I'm a little bit nervous. Let me show you some other swatches compared to the Charlotte Tilbury and the Maybelline Glow Perfector. So here we have the e.l.f. Halo Glow in One Fair, the Charlotte Tilbury in One Fair, and this is the Maybelline Glow Perfector in 00 Fair Light. All right, let's go ahead. Now, first of all, it's got a huge doe foot applicator, which actually brings out quite a nice amount of product. All right, that is two dips of the product, and I'm going to go in with my Sigma F80 Air Flat Kabuki brush to blend this out. This is a duo fiber brush. It's really good for liquid products. All right, so far it feels really lightweight on the skin and I am loving the luminosity. Look at that, beautiful. I'm going to turn the brightness down though because I think that the shade is just a little dark. Now they do say that you can wear this product on its own. For me personally, it's not the kind of product I would wear on its own because of my skin type and texture. I'm very acne prone, I've got large pores, and something with this much luminosity just makes all of that stand out. So if we take a closer look on my cheek here, you can see these bigger blemishes just look quite bold <laughs> with that glow on it. So for me, this kind of product is definitely one that I prefer to wear under a foundation. All right, I'm going to go in with the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. I'm using the shade 1N. This already has a bit of a satin finish, so the e.l.f. product underneath should hopefully make it look super dewy. Once the foundation's on, I'll go ahead and apply it as a highlighter and see how that goes. All right, this is what it's looking like with the foundation on. I did think that the glow would show a little bit more. Like my skin definitely looks luminous and hydrated like on my cheeks here, but I thought it would be a little bit more glowy. All right, I've put on some bronzer and blush. Let's see what it performs like as a highlighter. I'm just going to put a little bit onto my palette and then go in with the bum of my sponge to apply. I don't usually like putting products directly on my cheeks in case it moves the product underneath around. So I find this is like the safest way. <laughs> 
Okay, that is beautiful as a highlight. Yes. Okay, I prefer that so much more as a highlighter. Like that is glossy. You know, it's not metallic and like glittery. It's just got that beautiful sheen. <gasps> Ooh. All right, my makeup is all complete. Now my overall thoughts, would I wear it on its own? Not for me, as I said, because of my skin type and texture, it just accentuates all of that a bit too much. I did find there was a little bit of coverage. So if you do have like beautifully smooth, flawless skin, I think you would be able to use it as a product on its own. I also have combination skin. I get a little oily throughout my T-zone during the day. So I don't think the glowy product mixed with my natural oils would really be a good combination. It's sitting really well. It didn't mess with with the foundation formula. As I said, I was expecting it to get a little bit more glow come through, but I guess it depends on what foundation you're using. My favorite way to use it was as a highlighter. I feel like it gives the most beautiful, glossy, wet look, very natural and dewy. I love that. It's definitely nice and hydrating like it claims. Did it give me that really soft focus filter that it says it will do? Oh, I'm not quite sure. I was having a hard time articulating my thoughts when I was filming. Let's blame the baby brain. So here is an overview of all three products compared to each other. Starting with the e.l.f., as I said, the lighter shade is too deep on its own, but it looks fine once I have foundation over the top. Now, I did test it out again, and the glowiness definitely comes through underneath the foundation, which was really nice. I would say it has a very light coverage, but it doesn't give me that flawless, soft focus filter effect that it claims, but I think that could be because of my textured skin. So besides the shade being off, I think it is an absolute fantastic dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury in all other aspects. Now the Charlotte Tilbury, you do have a bigger shade range. So this shade I found was the best out of all three. It is perfect for my fair skin. The glow does come through really nicely under the foundation and it has a light coverage. So I guess here you have to weigh up whether the price tag is worth the better shade. <laughs> And then we've got the Maybelline, which is just as pricey as the e.l.f. at $35, but there are only five shades to choose from and you only get 20 mils of product, so it's not very big at all. I also found that the lighter shade was too deep on its own and even with foundation over the top, I could still tell that what I had on underneath was too deep. Now, I do find that this one gives a better coverage and looks a bit more smoothing, but it's not as glowy as the e.l.f. or the Charlotte Tilbury. So as you can see, I think there are pros and cons to all three products. So when it comes to deciding which one is best for you, I guess just take this information and <laughs> figure that out. Best of luck. For me, oh, I just feel like not one of these is absolutely perfect when it comes to formula shade and price. If the e.l.f. had a shade the same as the Charlotte Tilbury, that would be my number one recommendation, but it doesn't, so... Oh, I don't know. Anyway, that is enough rambling. I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, I would love it if you would take a look around and consider subscribing. I do a bunch of content about drugstore makeup that is available here in Australia. You can also come and follow me over on Instagram and TikTok. All right, well, I hope you're all having a fabulous day. Please let me know your thoughts down below because I would love to chat about it and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.